Doctor, I've lost Paul. Push, Rebecca. We're almost there, Rebecca. Push. Doctor, I'm having trouble here. She's losing her fast. Nurse! Doctor, I'm waiting for Doesn't look, look good. good. Nurse! Nurse! Oh, Sweetheart! Get someone from the nursery to come and take the baby. Get the grass party! I need 10 cc's of adrenaline. Doctor! 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 I'm afraid the preliminary tests point to a very dangerous cardiac condition, Mr. Carver. How dangerous? No. He should be in room 308. Thank you. We don't know for sure yet. Mr. Carver, can you tell me just a little bit about Danny's family history? Yes, my wife died when Danny was born. She had a heart attack during the delivery. Anything else you can tell me? No. Uh, we didn't even know if she had a heart problem. You're not suggesting that Danny might have the same problem. It's possible. Later this morning, we will have the results of the tests. Who was the OBGYN at Danny's delivery? Uh, Dr. Jennifer Kenyon. I know Dr. Kenyon, yes. Mr. Carver, you'll want to be with Danny when she wakes. We gave her a mild sedative when you arrived last night. Yes, of course, I'll stay. Okay. In the meantime, I'm going to pull your wife's medical records. Okay, thank you. How do you feel, baby? Tired. Well, you had a big nap. Daddy? Mm hmm? Why is this, like, happening? Well, you're a little sick, baby, and we just want to make sure you get well. I was dreaming about Mama. I wish you were here now. Tell me what she looked like. Well, she looked just like you. You mean I look just like her? Someday when you get to heaven, you'll see for yourself. I know, Daddy. Only I wish she was here right now. That's a lot of stuff. I'm real sick, aren't I? We're gonna get you well, baby. I know, Daddy. But I'm still a little bit scared. Shh, I know, I know. So my baby, one, two. But together we're gonna be all right. Hey, buddy. Can I come in? Hank. It's great to see you. I think... Yeah. Danny's asleep. Go on. Where have you been? I just got in from my last charter flight. I stopped by your house for a cup of coffee, and the neighbor said you took Danny to the hospital. Mm -hmm. What's going on, Jeff? Well... It seems that Danny has inherited Rebecca's heart problems. We're lucky that they found it so early, but it's still serious. The doctors say that Danny's going to need a heart transplant to survive. A transplant? Hey, you know what? That kind of surgery is routine anymore. She's going to be OK. If they can match a donor heart in time. Have they put her on the search list? Earlier this morning, but. I'm not sure I understand all that that entails. What that means is they send her stats in with the donor request to all the procurement agencies so they can find a perfect match. Where'd you learn all that? Well, you may be the college professor, but I watch the Learning Channel. She just has to be well again, Hank. I can't live without her. I 
no. Listen, I've got some business I've got to take care of. I'll check back with you and Danny first thing tomorrow. Okay. Thanks for coming by. receiving. I've got a package for Dr. Matisse in cardiology. Uh, PGI. I'll send it right up. I love you, Daddy. I love you too, sweetheart. Everything's going to be all right. I know. cutest patient. You just take a little nap. When you wake up, you'll be all better. See you in a little while, cutie pie. Mr. Carver? Yes? The operation went well. How's Danny? Well, she's stable, and her vital signs are good. Will she be all right? Well, it's too soon to tell. But the donor heart was a perfect match. There was no complications during surgery. Her new heart is working like a Swiss watch. Then she'll be all right. You're sure? Hey, Jeff, what's up? Hey, Hank. Just grading some papers. Seems to be an endless supply, you know? Hey, you're the professor. Danny home yet? Doctor does say soon, though. I'm gonna leave for the hospital as soon as I finish a sandwich here. Look, I need you to do me a favor. Sure, Hank, you name it. Gotta be, I gotta be out of the country for a while. Sort of. Uh, just just clear out my apartment, you know, sell all the furniture, hang on to the personal stuff, and I'll pick it up later. <laughs> Jeff, just remember that you and Danny are very special to me. Thank you, Hank. Are you sure you're OK? You sound Hank? Hello, Hank? He's in his office. Okay. Yes, come in. Hi, Dr. Matisse. Danny. Mm. 
I heard you had another birthday. Mm -hmm. uh, you're still my cutest patient. Uh, how you feeling? Totally great. I brought you something. Oh, this is great. Good to see you too, Jeff. Is this one taking your medicine? Like clockwork. Let's see what we have here. I totally made it myself. It's awesome. Thank you. Thank you. Let's put some stuff in. Yeah, see? It works. It's perfect. And it's a permanent fixture. Now, Jeff, you wanted to see me about something? Danny, why don't you go down to the nurse's lounge, say hello to your old friends? OK, Daddy. Danny, don't forget to come back and say goodbye before you leave. I'll come and get you in a couple of minutes. turning out to be quite the young lady. Don't I know it. It's hard to believe it's been over a year since the operation already. We had our first real boy talk last week. Uh, they grow up too fast. Doctor, I have a big favor to ask. Danny and I want you to tell us who the heart donor was. Jeff, you know it's not possible for me to do that strictly against policy and ethics in anonymous donor cases. I know, I know. That's all been explained to me. We just want to thank the family. It's only natural to feel gratitude. Gratitude? My baby's alive because of these people. And your fine work as a surgeon, of course. Danny lives and is healthy. But someone's child is dead. But if... Don't you know how hard such a meeting would be on the other child's family? You've got to let them move on with their lives. Seeing Danny well and healthy would not allow that to happen. Could be a blessing. For whom, Jeff? Danny lives because of some stranger's gift. If I was a donor, I'd want to know how the story ends. Noble sentiment. But still, a bit selfish, don't you think? Is it selfish to want to tell somebody that their grief has become joy? That their loss has become life? I'm sorry, Jeff. I'm needed downstairs. Jeff, I see your point, but my hands are tied. Later this evening, I'm leaving for Europe. I'm attending a medical conference in Scotland. I'll be gone two weeks. Let's talk more when I get back. Listen, say goodbye to Danny for me, will you? Maybe I can bring her back a little gift from Scotland. Jesse Pierce. Pierce. Minor Falls, California. You, uh, going somewhere, neighbor? Actually, I got a little time off. Between semesters, Danny and I are going to go out of town for a couple of days. Kind of hoping you'd keep an eye on a place for us. Sure, neighbor. Couldn't have a better watchdog. Just keep Camp Paranoid in your own yard, all right? <laughs> and no alien prisoners in the house. Don't you worry. I never take prisoners. You have a nice trip now. <laughs> you keep an eye on little Max for me, huh? <laughs> Thanks, Larry. Sure. Hey, Evan, did you get the license plate number of that black 4x4? Yeah. Four. Four. D, X, D, six, eight, two. Two. And then he's a trend up. <laughs> Thanks, Evan. Oh, you won.
This place has got a vacancy. <laughs> I'm totally not surprised, Dad. Afternoon. You have accommodations available? You mean we got a vacancy? Yes. We do. What's the rate for the night? Just the two of you? Two beds? Yes. $51.13, including tax. No credit cards. Fine. Out of state, need your license plate. Number 27, I'll show you. I'll get our things. country. Cold. You don't intend to turn that thing loose in the room, do you, young lady? Oh, no, sir. Max has his own room. Ice machine's down at the end there, number 14. There's candy bars, pop, and such there also. Uh, there is one thing you might be able to help us with. We're looking for the Nick Pierce family. You family? Sir? You Pierce people? Name's Carver, but you could be kin. Oh, no, sir, we're not kin. What's your business with those people? If you'll excuse me, it is personal. Do you know them? I might. This is a small town. Everybody knows everybody. Of course. Look, we're not here to cause any kind of trouble. I just would like to meet Mr. and Mrs. Pierce, that's all. That a fact? Did you know Jesse? Yep. Well, my daughter, Danny, has Jesse's heart. That a fact? Yes. So naturally, we just like to thank Jesse's parents. Nobody left but the girl. The girl? Rachel, her name is. Pierce now, used to be Mitchell. Her husband was killed in the same wreck killed Jesse. He was a deputy sheriff. It was a terrible thing. Terrible. Well. Could you tell me where Mrs. Pierce lives? Go back the way you came, back toward the Nevada line. About a mile out of town, you'll see a row of mailboxes on the right. Turn there. Go to the fork in the road. Big house. Too big for one woman to live in, I think. OK, thank you. Thank you very much. We'll go out there right away. Come on, Danny, let's go. Nice place.
Danny. That's not the way. Rachel Pierce? What? Are you Rachel Pierce? Yes, who are you? Oh, I'm Jeff Carver. This is my daughter, Danielle. Hi. What can I do for you? Well, we drove here from Reno to see you. About what? Your son, Jesse. You see, Danny was really sick and needed a heart transplant operation. We understand that the donor heart came from your son, Jesse. That's not possible. Well, why not? Because I refuse to sign the papers. Well, the records say that... I don't care what the records say. It's not possible. Oh. Well, is it possible that somebody might have, without your knowledge... Are you suggesting that... That's monstrous. How dare you come here? We're sorry, Mrs. Pierce. Come on, Daddy, let's go. We're sorry to have bothered you, Mrs. Pierce. We were warned this might not be a good idea. It wasn't. Hello, Bobby. Hello, Rachel. And in the town, I thought I might be able to get you something. No, I'm, I don't think so, thanks. Is everything all right here? Everything's fine, just a misunderstanding. Been down long, Mr. Carver. Just tonight, headed home tomorrow. How'd you know my name? Have a safe trip back to Reno. Bye, Bobby. Bye, Rachel. Hey. This new heart. Did it make you better? I'm glad. It's just that... If it was Jesse's heart, it would mean that people had lied to me, and that's what I was upset about. I wasn't angry at you, okay? I made this to give you. Okay, would you like to come in for some hot chocolate? <laughs> okay, I'm gonna change and I'll be ready by the time the milk's hot. Jesse? Yes, and that's my husband, Nick. Mm. Wow. Jesse knew karate? <laughs> that is so cool. He sure did. We did it as a family sport. Nick got us started, and we were very, very close. They're driving back from competition when they're Your records are wrong. Mrs. Pierce, the heart came from somewhere. I know something is wrong, but I don't understand what yet. Okay. Thank you. I appreciate your dilemma, but obviously you have the wrong person because I did not donate Jesse's heart. All right. It was nice to have met you, Mrs. Pierce. Thank you. It was nice to have met you too, Danielle. I'm glad you're doing so well. My friends call me Danny. Yeah. Goodbye, Danny.
you so much. <laughs> Hello? Why did you do this to me? Mrs. Pierce? Why did you have to be so noble? Why couldn't you just leave well enough alone? Well, it doesn't seem to make much difference now, does it? How can you be so positive? Maybe it's just a big mistake. Well, to tell you the truth, after meeting you today, I'm not sure what I'm positive about anymore. Donated heart came from a, what do you call it? I don't even know what you call it, a organ procurement agency. Um, I need to know for sure, how can I find out no. No, that's out of the question. Mrs. Pierce, when was the accident? Danny's operation was Tuesday, November 26th, the Tuesday before Thanksgiving. What we're talking about here is exhume. I don't think it's like that anymore. From what I understand, they just take x-rays. Okay, um, I need to make a few phone calls and I'll let you know. Rachel, I'd like to be there with you when... Okay. Please, Dr. Gardner, just tell me. Rachel, your son's organs are intact, including his heart. Rachel, but I'm fine, sweetie. I'm just so relieved. That's not possible. X-rays don't lie, young man. I've been coroner of this county for over 20 years, and that time... You, sir. I just don't understand how Now, if you'll excuse me, I'm sure you'd like to be alone, and I've got a million things to do. Rachel, I'm glad it turned out this way. Mr. Carver, Jeff, I'm sorry you came all this way for nothing. I just really don't understand all this. Whatever, Dad. Let's just go. Hey, would you guys like to come over for supper? I'm a good cook. Excellent. Can we, Daddy? We've imposed on you enough already. Oh, don't be silly. It'd be nice to cook for somebody besides myself. Here we are. One of my favorite recipes. I hope you like it. Mm -hmm. good. Thank you. So, I don't mean to pry, but... Why isn't your mother here? Uh, Rebecca died when Danny was born. Oh, I'm sorry. That must have been very difficult. It was, but I had this beautiful little baby to take care of, so... <laughs> then I got grown up. Yeah, well, that's another story. So is your grammar, young lady. <laughs> you sound like a teacher. He is. He's a big deal English literature professor. Danny. Well, you seem like you've done a very good job raising him. <laughs> Daddy, mm -hmm. we forgot to say grace. Oh. Do you mind? No. <clears throat> Bow your heads, please. Lord, may we eat all that we're able until our tummies touch the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, silly. Now do it right. Okay. Lord, we thank you for this food you've put before us. And we thank you for our new friend, Rachel, and for all your blessings. In Jesus' name, amen. 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 <laughs> so, how did you meet your husband, Nick? Mm-hmm. We were high school sweethearts. He's a deputy sheriff. 
Oh, you did very well. Oh, goodness, no, we could have never afforded this place. His grandfather gave it to us after he died, and along with a small farm. It is big. Oh, yeah, enormous, actually. We have six bedrooms. Nick and I wanted to have lots and lots of kids, just like he grew up. And then when his grandpa died, we thought we were on our way. But no more kids? No, no more. You know, the night of the accident, I, um, well, they came to my door and they asked me to sign the papers. And I said that I wouldn't, or that, you know, I couldn't, but now I actually wish that I had. Seems like good can come from adversity. She's a wonderful little girl, Jeff. I know. When we found out she was sick, she took it better than I did. How so? When Rebecca passed away, I lashed out at everyone, everything, family, friends, even God. I was lost. I was working on my PhD, couldn't concentrate. I'd always wanted to teach, but it all just came to a standstill. Then one day, I just looked in my little baby girl's eyes and saw Becca looking right back at me. And that was God showing me. Also was the moment I found my soul again. Ah, we should be getting going. It's a long drive back to Reno, baby. Okay. Will you call me when you get home? Sure. Rachel, I want to apologize for all the trouble I've caused you. I'm going to look into this tomorrow. I'll get back to you, okay? Okay. Thank you. Thank you so much for dinner. You're welcome. <laughs> Danny, goodbye. Thank you for my present. California Department of Motor Vehicles. Response to request from the FBI. Vehicle assigned license plate number 2DXD648. Registered to California Corporation. Details follow registered mail. Long time no see. What's up, Goldman? <laughs> Good man, G. Good man. Good morning. How long have you been up? Gee, I don't know. I'm on vacation. Morning, Max. Do you want anything? Pony. I want pony, Daddy. Please, 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 please. Uh -huh. This is Mr. Carver. I called a couple of days ago. I'd like to speak to somebody in charge of donor records, please. Thank you. Nigel Beckett, how may I be of help? Mr. Beckett. My daughter received a heart which your records say was donated by the Pierce family of Minor Falls, California. But we visited that family and discovered that Jesse Pierce was not the donor after all. What is your name, sir? And the name of the patient and the address? Danielle Carver. Why do you need an address? There may be more than one patient with that name. Oh, uh, well, 1721 Sagebrush Drive, Reno, Nevada. Date of surgery? Mr. Carver. An organ recipient visiting a donor family is strictly against policy. Yes, we understand that. We just want to say hello to the family and thank them. Mr. Carver, where did you get the information concerning the Pierce family? Mr. Beckett, I'd just really like to know where my daughter's heart came from, and if you could tell me, I would really appreciate it. Of course you do. It's only natural, and I'd like to help you. That's better.
You mean today? And I'm leaving on a business trip in the morning, so tonight seems to be the best possible time. I'll be free after six. That will give you time to drive out here. <laughs> Fine. How far is it? I'm in Reno. And it is a few miles. It's going to be cold and dark when you arrive, so be sure to dress warm. Must have, must have taken a wrong turn someplace. I read the directions just like you wrote them. Yeah. Well, maybe I can find somebody to ask. Dad, this is a pretty scary place. Yeah, this place is deserted. Let's get out of here. Come on, honey. Taxi. How much to go on, Mr. Carver? Well, what do you mean? What do you want? Well, no description of the men. No one saw you get off the train here in Reno. It was dark. It was the middle of the freight yard. Right. We took a taxi here, just like I said. Middle of the freight yard. That's right. You're not suggesting that I made this up. I... Detective Johnson? Yeah. Did you check? Okay. Okay. Come on in. The units sent to the scene. Didn't find anything. No shell casings and no abandoned vehicle. Do you know the registration number of the taxi, the driver's name? Look, this is crazy. Somebody shot at us. We hopped a train. We took a cab here. I called the police. What more can I do? It just doesn't check out, Mr. Carver. Think of anything else helpful? Here's my card. Girl. Daddy, mm -hmm. what's going on? I'm scared. You get some rest, honey. You've been up all night. We'll talk tomorrow. It's gonna be okay. Jeff, please give me a call as soon as you get this message. This is 
Rachel. This is the third time I've called. I'm going out of my mind with worry. Please call me. Huh. Got a flamethrower I can borrow, neighbor? <laughs> you just took ten years off my life, my man. <laughs> hey, you want to know who those guys were? <laughs> what guys? The guys in the black 4 by 4 Larry, what are you talking about? Well, apparently you're being stalked by an adoption agency from California. Any ideas why? I'm being stalked. Mm-hmm. Now, that truck that followed you out of here is registered to the New World Adoption Agency, 316 Washington Avenue, Sacramento. Does that ring a bell? Wait a minute. A truck followed us out of here? Larry, how do you know this stuff? Well, let's just say, uh, paranoia has its advantages. Watch your back. Mr. DeBecky, some bad guy shot at us last night. What bad guys? What's going on, Jeff? Fill me in. Larry, I have found myself in the middle of a nightmare. Well, now, did you guys see any black 4x4s out there where you were? Police couldn't find a trace of anything, not even our car. Or Max. And where did this happen? Some train yard way out in the middle of nowhere. We were going to see this company, PGI. Larry, why are you writing this stuff down? What's PGI? Procurement Group International. You know the other day, when you saw us, we were leaving? Mm -hmm. Well, Danny and I were going to visit the family that donated our heart. But when we got there, it turned out to be a huge mistake. It wasn't Jesse's heart after all. The hospital records listed PGI as the agency that located the donor heart. But apparently PGI had made a mistake about where the heart came from. Larry. Larry. I'm gonna take the garbage off, honey. You go to bed, okay? I'll tuck you in. your backpack, throw some things in it. Just a change of clothes and a toothbrush, that's all. Get some things, throw them in a duffel bag for me, too. Why? We gotta hurry. I found Max. You found Max? Yes, now hurry, please, we gotta leave. Okay. Come on. Hello, Rachel, it's Jeff. Listen, Rachel, some crazy stuff is happening. Some guys tried to kill us last night. Yes. Get the police and just listen to me for a second, please. These guys are serious and they know where we live. I learned some stuff about an adoption agency in Sacramento. I'm gonna fly out there right away. I'll call you when I get there. Okay, thank you, Rachel. No, Rachel, I won't. Hello? Yes. I need a taxi to the airport right away. I'm at 501... No, wait a minute. Have a cab meet me at the convenience store at the corner of King and East 14th Street. Yes, I'll be there in 10 minutes. Danny! Yes, Danny. <sighs> Hurry up, we gotta go. I'll explain on the way. Extension 43, please. Ah, yes, an oldie but a goldie. <laughs> Breeze, how are you? Long time no hear from. How you doing, kid? Still kicking, G? How's the family? 
No, no, I'm still here, I'm still here. Hey, I need a favor, for old time's sake. Sure, kiddo, just name it. Hey, how'd you make out in that last operation down in, uh... Oh, it's fine, piece of cake, piece of cake. Always interested in business. I need you to make a phone call and buzz somebody. See what you can shake out of the tree. Whose tree? Well, listen up. This one gets wild. Yes, uh, Nigel Beckett, please. Nigel Beckett, how may I help you? I'm calling from Washington. Yes, how may I help you? Yes. Who do you show to be the donor of a uh, heart for transplant patient named... Danielle Carver of Reno, Nevada. I would have to look into the matter. I'll have my secretary send you the proper forms. Mr. Beckett, I'm not interested in filling out your forms. I just want to know who the donor was. Sir, with all due respect, we have procedures we must follow. Some of which are not too pleasant if you choose to be uncooperative. Now I'll ask you again, do you My secretary will send you the proper forms. And now, sir, I think I must say good day. Okay, Slick. We're going to find out just exactly who you really are. This is one of those mail packing companies where you run a box. Are you sure you have the right address? That's the address Larry gave me. Well, where did Larry get it? Nobody knows where Larry gets anything. Maybe they know something, I'll check. Hey, are you okay? Last night must have been horrible, huh? Totally great. <laughs> really. Well? Well, there it is, ladies. New World Adoption Agency. What? They keep a drop box here. A guy comes once a month to pick up the mail. But that doesn't make any sense. Don't they have an office? Nope. No office address listed with these people. Not even a phone number I asked. The guy said that information isn't necessary just to rent a mailbox. That's nuts. So far, we found an organ donor who wasn't, an adoption agency that isn't, and we've been spied on and shot at. What's next? Well, we'll just have to dig deeper. Okay, Professor, what now? Okay, how can we get information on the agency? Off the internet? Of course, RC. Who's RC? Just the greatest hacker of all time, or so he claims. Go back to the interstate. RC lives in a cabin in the foothills near the state line. You got it. Hello, 
I've got something I think you ought to see, sir. This guy here, the dapper one, is Nigel Beckett. The older man is Gunther Reitman. Now, this woman here is Tasha Halinkovich, the doctor. Well, Beckett's place of birth is unknown. He's got a long, heavy sheet, armed robbery, extortion, racketeering, and fraud. Two convictions. The report says that he spent some time in an East European prison. I uh, just talked to the arrogant jerk. He didn't even use an alias. Tell me about the older man. Reitman is an Austrian national, a former accountant for the Colombian cartels. And last but not least, the lovely lady, a doctor you said. Medical? Yes, sir. It seems a good doctor needed to vacate 11 countries to avoid uh, ethics charges. She likes to practice. But we couldn't find any record of her attending any medical schools. Thanks, R.C. We should be able to find you from there. We just crossed the state line. We should be at your hibernation cave in about an hour. I don't even want to say, not on a cell phone. But you may not thank me later. See ya. Okay, where to? Pull over here, let me drive. It's a little complicated. Yes, sir. Right. Okay. Everything's been cleared upstairs. We'll get you on the next flight. We'll make reservations for you at the Reno Hilton. Wow. Look at this place. It's like CNN headquarters. This guy's a student of yours? You're gonna love RC. He's a video game inventor, programmer. No telling how much money he makes. Goes to college, but just to meet girls. I see. Hey. Hi, Hi Danny. It's good to see you. you RC, this is my friend hey. Rachel. Oh, I'm pleased to meet you. <laughs> How, How are you doing? You? Very well, thank you. Good to you. see you. You too. Well, wow, let's go inside. Do you have any new computer games? Oh, for I am working on the coolest game. It's called Spitting Death. Okay. 24 levels, mutant zombies. Well, you picked a winner here, Professor. So, RC, what does all this mean? I have the foggiest idea what you've been doing. Okay, well, on the surface, this looks like your standard federally licensed and approved adoption agency. Yeah. But. I did some digging. I double-checked all of this stuff, and some I triple-checked, so please don't ask if I'm sure. This is a list of all the parents who have adopted kids through New World. I did some background checks. You know, telephone books, newspapers, obituaries. So? They're all dead. Who's, Who's dead? dead? The parents who supposedly adopted these kids. You're saying some of these people have died? They are all dead, and they all died before any of the adoptions took place. Wait, I'm confused. Before they adopted the children? Exactly. And not just one or two, but all of them. Are you sure that's impossible? I said don't ask me if I'm sure. Look, Arcelia Casta, age 10, she was adopted out of Guatemala, and she went to George and Emma Hennessy of Albany, New York. Right. Except the Hennessy's died in a plane crash four years ago. What? The adoption took place last year. It's the same with all of these kids. 243 children, 17 different countries. All of them adopted in the last six years and all adopted by dead people. What have I gotten us into? I want a drink of water, please. I know this name. What? Which one? Nigel Beckett. He's the guy I talked to at PGI. Yeah, he's on all the corporate charters, along with these other two here, Gunther Reitman and Tasha Helena, whatever. They're on the boards at New World Adoption, something called Procurement Group International, what you call PGI. Well, and get this, they've all got offshore accounts, the Caymans, Bahamas, and Switzerland. I mean, how cliche is that? Okay, so Jeff, what does PGI have to do with the adoption of children? I'm not sure I want to know. R.C., can you look at PGI a little closer? 
Yeah, I can try. Why don't you boil up some coffee? I'll ring some bells. Oh, my gosh. Um, Jeff? What's happening? I tripped some kind of security system. What? Oh, they're tracing me. Look, see that power switch on the wall? Flip that, or they'll fry my equipment. Which one? The red one. Hurry, Jeff. Oh, man, that was spooky. What? I have not hit ice like that since I tried to slip into a Pentagon database. Yeah, better forget I said that. <laughs> what can we do about PGI? Nothing, man. We're through. I do not mess with people that can trace me that quickly. I think they may have locked on. Locked on? What's that mean? Trace me. It means they may know who I am. Mm. Mm. And where I am. Oh, this hacking stuff is always on the legal edge. Well, thanks for everything, RC. Well, what do you want to do now? Mm, let's get a motel. Where? Any place with hot water and a tub. home. I need to feed Max. Didn't you give him food and water before we left? Yeah, but he needs hug too. Mm. Can we go home today? I don't think so, honey. Not yet. Well, wake me when we can, okay? Okay. Oh, and Daddy, I forgot the computer game that Mr. RC gave me. Can we get that before we go? Okay, honey. It's only about a mile or so back up the road. Danny asleep? Like a log. Good. Rachel, I'm beginning to get a little concerned about you and all this. I think maybe you ought to just drop us off and go back home. Are you getting rid of me now that the fun's about to start? No, it's not that. It's just that this thing is crazy. I mean, three days ago, my biggest worry is what I was going to say to you when we met. And now I feel like a fugitive from the bad guys. Seriously, it's not too late for you to go home. No, I'm not leaving. Who would watch Danny? The more I learn about this, the more frightened I become, for all of us. Well, maybe it's time to go to the police. I don't know. I mean, I don't think so. I, they didn't even believe that Danny and I got shot at. <laughs> well, it's different now. You have something to give to them. Yeah. Maybe RC could uh, use that, what do you call it, the um, internet routing service thing? Right. Maybe they could look at that. I'll tell you, Mr. Carver, one good thing's come out of all this. Yeah, I'd certainly like to know what. Well, you got to meet me. Mm. <laughs> there is something to be said about that.
What's wrong? Is it me? No, no, no. It's Nick. Oh, it's okay. It's okay. I, I know. Just, he's the only man I've ever known. I've never been with anybody else. I understand. I, I've known no one since Rebecca. Danny and my students are all I've been living for. Until I met you, you taught me how to live, Rachel. You taught me how to love again. Rachel, when we get out of this mess, I'm gonna court you properly. I'm gonna call you on the phone and ask you out for dates and bring you flowers and take you to ball games. We're gonna eat cheeseburgers and french fries. Because <laughs> I love you with more passion than I've ever known. Gonna be in town long? Breeze, good to see you. <laughs> nice digs. Yeah, they gave me the Hoover suite. <laughs> so how you doing? Sneaking by, you? Oh, endless paperwork. Good to be out here in the Golden West, though. So where do we start? Well, I was thinking the hospital where the heart transplant was done. I'll fill you in on the way. All right. Looking good, G. Something's not right here. I'm going to take a look around. Rachel, come here. Danny, go back to the car. Daddy, you're scaring me. I want to stay here with you and Rachel. Jeff. Let's get out of here. Come on. Come on. Special Agent Goldman? Right here. Happy to meet you. I'm Dr. Emerson Hayes. Please be seated. What can I do to help the FBI? We'd like to speak with Dr. William Matisse. I hope Bill isn't in any sort of trouble. Nothing like that. But we'd like to ask him a few questions. Would it be possible for you to send for him now? He's in Scotland. He's at a symposium. Uh, but he's due back. Um, Looks like 10 days. Is there any way we could reach him? Oh, I think so. Uh, Brenda, see if you can look up the telephone numbers for the convention center headquarters and hotel for Dr. Matisse in Scotland. Can you tell me what this is about? Agent DeBecky, would you go get those numbers and make the calls? Sure. Now, doctor, what can you tell me about Procurement Group International? Hey, get this. Good Dr. Matisse showed up in Edinburgh, all right. He even gave his big keynote speech. But then two days ago, a messenger from his hotel hands the symposium organizers a note saying that he's sick and can't continue. Sick? Did he leave for home? Don't know. Hotel says he checked out that same day. Oh, no, wait a minute. A doctor can't continue attending a convention of doctors because he's sick? You couldn't find a doctor? Yeah. It smells like last week's fish, huh? Let's call his home and see if he returned. Maybe he's there and he just didn't check in with Dr. Hayes and Oscar. Well, I called his wife, and she was in a panic, and she hasn't heard a word from him in five days. Let's go see the car first. Let's do it.
there's no one home. That means he's been gone three days. You think you can find this PGI headquarters? Yeah, yeah, I think so. They got telephones, they got addresses. And you got connections at the phone company? Uh-huh. What are you stopping here for? This is where I live. We're gonna need a few things. Won't be a minute. You mean you're neighbors with Carver? Hey, I gotta live somewhere. Funny, Breeze. I thought maybe you'd roll up in a camouflage sleeping bag and wait for the moon to rise. <laughs> really like to talk to our neighbor, Larry. He's the one that connected the black truck with the adoption agency. The mysterious guy? Yeah, I think I picked up a touch of his paranoia. What's paranoia mean? It's how you feel after someone has shot at you. <laughs> oh, then I got it too. Okay, sweetheart. I'll call you when lunch is ready, kiddo. Okay. Thanks, Rachel. <laughs> You're welcome. Max, I'm coming. Turn in. So wonderful to hear the sound of a child again. I'll find out. Yes. Good afternoon, uh, Mr. Carver. Yes. I'm Stevens. Dr. James Stevens from the hospital. I'm sorry, I don't. Uh... Don't tell me. <laughs> Dr. Matisse didn't call you and tell you I'd be taking his place for the in-home interview. I was expecting the doctor when he returned from Scotland. He's actually um, indisposed. Oh. Very well then. Please come on in. Thank you. Mrs. Carver? No, I'm a friend. Oh, I am sorry. I hope I haven't come at an impossible time. It's just that I must catch a plane for New York at... Oh, my, in three hours. Could you spare me just a few minutes, Mr. Carver? This won't take long. It, I could just kill Dr. Matisse for not arranging this appointment sooner. Well... Okay, we were just about to have a hot drink, actually. Would you like something, coffee or tea? That would be wonderful. Mrs. Pierce. Coffee, please. Okay. Please, have a seat. Thank you. Let's see here. The patient's name is Danielle Carver, age 10. Well, she's 11 now. Yes, she had a transplant. And she's recovered very well. Wonderful. Is she home? Might I have a word with her? Well, she's in her room right now. Uh, perhaps she could meet her later. That's great. Let's see. If you will excuse me a moment, I think I'll help with the coffee. Oh, of course. Cream and sugar. Black's fine. Please don't trouble yourself. Something about that guy's voice. It sounds familiar. 
His voice? Yeah, I've heard that voice before. Daddy! Nigel Becker! are practically daring us to come in. Why would gliders need this kind of security? Thieves? <laughs> oh, yeah. Like there's a real problem with people hot-wiring these things and flying off in them. <laughs> Glider jacking. The crime no one hears about, because, you know, no engines. <laughs> Very funny, Breeze. But seriously, I'll bet you a cigar that that fence doesn't go all the way around. Hey, where are you going? Hey, I got some stuff in the back of the truck. We may need it. Doing? Starting a revolution here, comrade? Nah, just a few tools of the trade. You want the, uh, you want an M16 or a shotgun? You better give me the shotgun. There you go. A couple shells for you. Been a long time since we've been on a stakeout, Breeze. Oh, yeah, but not long enough. Yeah. I don't know about that. It's good to get out of the office once in a while. <laughs> Look, don't get me started about offices. You ever think about coming back to normal duty? Uh, you got to be normal to do normal duty. I like what I do. Just go where you will, huh? Yeah, I like the breeze. Where's my, uh, where's my camel grease paint? What are you gonna do with that? Well, it helps my You ain't gonna need that. You're a good enough shot as it is. Come on. Oh, you're still no punchy. Hey, heads up. We got some action. Well, well, well. Looky here. A sign of life. Let's go in. No, 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 no. Not yet. Why? Probable cause. Right now, we got none. But I want to get a closer look. Let's go. We have to call the police, Jeff. No. They said they would call. We will wait. Mr. Carver, my name is Hyphen. I believe you know who I am. Yes. You mentioned in passing that you have a paper with the names of the officers of my little organization. Where is Danny? Now, I have something that belongs to you. Simply put, Mr. Carver, Where is my daughter? Shut up! And listen. You will be contacted and told where to find your daughter. I want to talk to her now. Do as I say and she will not be hurt. and I shall harvest a very valuable piece of merchandise. Hank Butler? You must be dealt with severely. You are insane. I believe she's called Danny by those who love her most. Do you understand what he was talking about? 
the object that he said he was going to harvest is Danny's heart. Wait a minute. I know where I saw something on PGI. When Hank left, he asked me to clean out his apartment. I found a little basket. It had personal items in it. His, his keys, his watch. I said it right here. Oh. It's a little basket. It was right here. No, I thought I was cleaning. This? Yes. Bob's tumbleweed. I knew I'd seen that name before. PGI? Yes. This is main gate number 413. Hank was a courier. Rachel, Hank stole the heart. Bob's tumbleweed, what's that? It's a gas station. It's a, also a convenience store. It's out by Pyramid Lake. I know the place. Do you think somebody out there might know? That's a reach, Jeff. You got a better idea. They got my baby. You heard the maniac. She's not a hostage. She's a loose end. If there's anything they've been consistent about, it's taking care of their loose ends. Okay. Don't say that. He said that as long as we do what he said, he will not hurt her. Well, what's going to stop him? Why have you let this happen? First Rebecca, now you're gonna take Danny too. What do you want from me? Why do you turn your back on me when I need you the most? Danny's heart is stolen from an innocent. Can you imagine? Only thing that matters now is getting her back. Oh, Rachel, I'm gonna go out there. I'm going with you. No. I care about her too. Even more than I thought. Besides, I'm the only one around here that knows martial arts and how to shoot. Jeff, have you ever even handled a gun at all? A gun? No, why? What you think? We were just gonna run out there and demand they give us Danny back? Rachel, no guns. I'll give you the short course in marksmanship on the way out to Tumblewood Gyms. It's Bob's Tumbleweed. Whatever. Yes, that would be fine. Yes, transfer the funds to the offshore account number, which I gave you. That's correct. As soon as we receive verification, we will deliver the parcel. Carver girl's here. Tosha, are you prepared? Splendid. Open it. Why don't you give me the semi-automatic and you take the revolver? Which is which? You're serious, aren't you? I told you I don't know anything about guns. Okay. Well, give me the flat one and you take the round one. Jeff, don't worry. All you may have to do is pull the trigger and make a little bit of noise. Why don't you just go ahead and put it in your pocket? Turn right up here. It's about another eight miles. And Rachel? Hurry. This has been a very interesting experience. We must be sure to take steps to ensure this never happens again. I shall see to that, Beckett. You are there have been far too many loose ends lately, and it has absorbed a lot of energy. I want you out of here immediately. Your services are at an end. What? You have jeopardized my entire global organization. The United States was a very convenient place from which to operate. Now that is finished. But I... You, Mr. Beckett, are terminated. Do I need to remind you you wish to do me any harm, there's no place on this earth where you would be safe, no? You have a surgery to perform, yeah? Splendid. It's got to be around here someplace. Clerk said there was a sign at the turnoff. 
clerk at the store knew about the place? Yeah, at least he knew about the entrance. He thought he even remembered Hank stopping in from time to time. There. I see it. Ready? We'll hide the car and then we'll sneak in for a closer look. Okay, hurry. It is ridiculous. There's nothing out here Come but on. gliders. If Danny's here, she'll be inside, okay? Which way? Let's go. Just stay low, follow me. Come on. This spriggin' jet. Fuzzy. They're gonna be here any second. You hide around the corner. I'll lead them away and then you slip inside. No. Just do it. Now we got probable cause. Let's go. Then report. She's new with the American girl. Go. They came for her. When? Where? We don't know. Whenever they come for someone, we never see them again. We don't know what happens to them. Stay here, Henry. Yeah. You're changing our base of operation to Frankfurt. That's correct. Ah. 
Let me guess. The impugnable, Mr. Cobb. Where is my daughter? For years, we evaded the police, the FBI, the Interpol. No one suspected. And you, a nothing man with a nothing life. I said, where is my daughter? At this very moment, she's giving back to me what is mine. If you have touched her, I will kill you. I don't think so, Mr. Cobb. I don't think you have it in you to kill someone. You're right. Not like you. I can kill. Not Cobble. I'm not even somebody as despicable as you, but you understand this. She is my daughter, and I will hurt you! Wait, no. where is she? Don't! Where is she? She's down the hallway to the right! The operating room! Must have missed. Does it hurt, Daddy? Not too bad, sweetheart. Larry, where have you been? Hey, neighbor. You okay, kid? I'm Special Agent Goldman, Mr. Garber. I have a few questions, but they'll hold for a few days. That was a very brave and stupid thing you did. You should have called us as soon as your daughter was kidnapped. Hey, G, what do we do with the kids? Oh, we could do... Uh... Wait. If you don't mind, I'd, I'd really like to take care of them. Can I take them with me? I think we can arrange for that, Mrs. Pierce. We'll sort out the paperwork and details tomorrow. Let me ask you. Yeah. Looks like you're gonna get that big family after all. I get you hamburger, hot dog. How about marrying the chef? That's exactly what I want to talk to you about. Look at you from Rachel. 